TV dudes again. <laughs> Basically, this is uh, about us, um, what we watched over the summer. It's uh, the dead season, generally, um, for TV, but a few new TV shows do pop up, and then it's also a good time to catch up on all that stuff that you guys yeah. haven't been able to catch up on. Yeah, we have two big overlaps, Yeah, and they're both on FX, Right. and that's, uh, we'll start off by talking about Louie. Louie, 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 Louie. Oh. Yes. I mean, oh, FX have been kicking out yeah. great television yeah. programming since like the Shield. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And the thing about the thing about Louis is it really points up the way FX does things. Because you know, the deal is that Louis C.K., who's the comedian who, who does the show, he basically does everything. He's yes. the director, producer. He probably cooks the meals for, yes. the, for the catering. Yeah, but that was the deal he made with FX. Right. Like, look, I'm going to give you a finished product. You don't, you don't give me notes. Right. It's great because it's lower budget for them. And it's it's a it's a leap of faith for them, but they're what they're doing is they're finding talented people and trusting them. Yeah. And I'd love that if that was the model for all network TV because we see the results. We're like Louis is such a uh, it's an extension of him as as a person as a comedian. It's so true to his act and his style. Absolutely. And it's it's so funny that uh, I mean he's he's not taking a standard route in no. his show. And when you expect that there's going to be all these. Um, like rapid fire, quick comedic punches and uh, the dialogue. Right. It is, and it's, it's a lot more thought provoking. He puts a different spin on it. I mean, when I first, it used to be advertised doing Justified, in a, and a funny thing since I watched this little bit of Justified on my DVR, and it was from March, and they were advertising it since oh, March. Oh, yeah, a long time. I mean, yeah, I was, yeah. and so when I first saw it, I'm thinking, oh, I hope it's not like this like, kind of Seinfeld thing. Right. But Louis, he just has this unbelievable self loathing that comes off in the show that is kind of creepy funny. What he does in that show is that he always has that kind of funny joke, almost kind of like Kirby enthusiasm, yeah. but then what he does that Kirby doesn't do is that he goes off on a really serious tangent makes you think, like you're saying, Grant. Right. And but the thing is, you can never tell when he's going to do it. You know, it's funny you say Kirby enthusiasm. That's what I was thinking when I was watching the newest episode is that oh, yeah. this is, I mean, you think Kirby enthusiasm can be kind of squirm inducing and comfortable? Oh. Man, Louis C.K., uh, some of that stuff, Louis, C., Louis is hysterically funny. It does make me laugh out loud more than, more than more, most shows. But yeah, it also, it also has that sort of, the, it's exploring the phil philosophical underpinnings of comedy. Yeah. You know, what makes it funny? Why is this funny? The other show that uh, we're, we all been uh, catching up on is on our is on our other favorite TV sh oh, yeah. channel, AMC. It, yeah. And that is Rubicon. Uh, it's only in its third episode as of uh, this taping, but uh, it's it's going in this interesting. Um, 70s espionage feel, but it's, oh, it's yeah. in modern times. It's totally three days of the condor. I think the pacing is the thing that are, is putting some people off. Some people are like, right. just tell me what the show's about. And for me, I'm like, well, you know what? That's kind of what the show is. It's slower, and that's okay. What it's about is this guy working for this weird intelligence agency. He's clearly found this conspiracy. We don't know what the conspiracy does. We right. don't really know who, that much who's involved with it. But I kind of don't need to because the mood and the character work is so intense. Mm -hmm. that I, that I'm in for a J while. James Badge Dale, who plays the lead, Will Travers, yeah. is just... He's a, phenomenal. He's a, well, I actually, I mean, because, I don't know, y'all remember him. He was in uh, 24. He was, I know, right? Was, I can't believe it's the same guy. He was, he was Chase. Chase. He was Chase. And I'll never forget, because he had to chop his own hand off to yeah. get that ball. Well, he, was like, he was like Jack's younger pretty boy companion. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and then he's totally, like, transformed himself yeah. into this, like, introverted... Uh, cerebral. Cerebral kind of just... Like, even if his movements are all, like, deliberately thought and just kind of moving. I mean, even his clothes, like, he's always wearing hoodies. So he's always yeah. got a hood on and stuff yeah. like that. Like, he's trying to hide from the world. There's a, there's that conspiracy, the main conspiracy that they're letting you in on a little bit in right. Rubicon. But then you also see the pressures of working for this, uh, yeah. this whatever, CIA, this contract the CIA type agency with the with the character, the other characters whose lives are totally falling right. apart. Right, there's and it's all hinted. That's what, it's, yeah. it's very subtle, like... The girl, one of the the young girl comes in and she's got like you know black eyes and clearly hung over and yeah. and the one of the other characters is sort of informing to uh, to the boss says yeah I think she's got a drinking problem and he's like yeah that's not uncommon right and 
And then, uh, yeah, one of the guys has had problems with his family, and he's sort of channel oh. channeling that into... Uh, that was great. That was in this last yeah. episode. I'm getting a very weird vibe from this show that I, I shouldn't make this comparison, but it's really reminding me of that show, John from Cincinnati. Oh, well, yeah, that's... And that there's, wow. like, there's these really interesting characters. There's obviously this mystery, but... Yeah. And unless they start like advancing the plot a little yeah, quicker right. and like at least giving no, giving me a little bit more excitement, there was there was that scene I, I with the reveal with the motorcycle yeah. in this most recent episode. That was cool. I thought that was really cool yeah. and engaging. I was like, oh, and they they cut to commercial. I was like, that was cool. Yeah. And then it just went back to going slow. And the whole subplot with like Miranda Richardson is that the yeah. 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 Like I'm just bored by that. The, the stuff with Miranda Richardson. It is sort of slow and it's sort of why, but it's so clearly involved with like he was her husband was leaving her clues, right. just like Will's uh, father-in-law was leaving him clues. Right. That I think they're sort of leading those two together. They're going to have the two different parts of the puzzle. Yeah, I think I think it's one of those things where you're either in or you're not. Yeah. And and sometimes you know things yeah. move too slow. You're like I just I can't deal with yeah. it. I'm into it because I'm, I'm in. Just, yeah. Oh, I'm in. I'm totally. Plus, in, but yeah. As far as I know, I, the show's doing really well. Yes. Yeah. It is. Um, but I'm afraid that if. Yeah, it doesn't start no, the, changing like it, it's going to drop its numbers. The job from Cincinnati, Cincinnati comparison is fair because that that's a show I loved at first. Yeah, even though it was you know played for killing Deadwood, which didn't make me love it much. But yeah, it went <laughs> uh, after a few episodes. Yeah, you just it was just nonsense. It was good performances, but the story it was nothing. like, but you're not but, answering anything. You know what? That, that had, all that had <laughs> the whole weird quasi mystical surfer thing.